So it's only been six batches since I changed the oil uh, filters, but it's looking a little cloudy. And since I'm packing the freeze dryer really full every time, I'm going to go ahead and drain it and replace the uh, paper towel filters. I turn off the vacuum pump power so there's no way it can come on when there's no oil in it. So I'm going to start draining this one. So you can see there was a little bit of water first. And get that draining. Get the other one going. And that one just goes into a container. This one goes through a paper towel filter and into the container. So it'll be ready to recycle. And I don't have a big enough container. This, this container isn't big enough to hold it all. So I only do a little bit at a time and then turn it off. But, you know, it's not like a lot of work. You just let it go for a while and then come back later. I mean, it just filters through slowly. And I'm going ahead and draining the pump itself too right now. If I want to clean the filters while a batch is running, I can simply turn the drain valve off at the pump and to isolate it from the filters. And then I can clean the filters while the pump is still going. And the way it's set up, the second one gets its uh, it comes through the first one and then into the second one. So you can see it's just barely dripping. That's because there's no, there's nothing flowing through that way. So that's why I added this um, fitting on the top of here. So then I can let air in from the top of this one. And then that one can drain. It's important to make sure you remember to put this thing back on. Okay, I'll come back later when it's drained out more. So, working on changing out the filter element, this paper towel piece that's inside here. And this is the system I use. These are goldenrod water block filters. They're made for, I think, diesel fuel to take out the water. I'm not using the water block filter element because the elements are about $18 and last oh, four or five batches. And then you can re-dry them and use them. So I did that over and over. But this paper towel material, even with the reuse of the other filter, the paper towel material is way less expensive. Okay. And then I have some 3D printed parts inside there to wrap them around. Then I drilled and tapped this little fitting in there. Um, that's for an air vent for draining so that I can drain this while the freeze dryer is still running. Then I printed this cap to cover it, put some seal material inside there. Anyway, so then I can screw it on there and just block the, the opening. And then it has the barbs at the end, which I think were these uh, little three-eighths to half-inch barbs. And then the little brass nipple piece, that's that. And there's also one of those on the um, vacuum pump. On the oil outlet, I screwed one of these on to be able to attach this plastic tubing. And obviously for oils, this plastic tubing is not the right kind of tubing. It gets hard and crunchy and I have to replace it about once a year uh, or it's in risk of breaking and oil spilling out, which of course I've done pretty much every time. So I really should put an oil type or a fuel type uh, hose here. But 
uh, I haven't done it yet, and I have enough hose to replace this one more time before it's an issue. And I like the clear part so I can see what's going through. Anyway, that's it's probably a bad plan. And then some steel, uh, stainless steel clamps at the end. And the rest of it are just close fittings and adapters that were from the plumbing departments. And it depends on what size you get of these. These come in a three quarter inch and a one inch. And at the time I got these, I could only get one of each. So this one's a three quarter, this is a one. And that's referring to the threaded piece on each end of this. So this one, I have to have an adapter to go from the three quarters to the one. Uh, and then this side has a three quarters down to the five eighths for the barbed piece for the plastic hose. Anyway, it's a pretty simple setup. Just off the shelf junk kind of things. Uh, my timer is a little bit different. So I just looked at what I had around. So I had a 12 volt battery that's for garage door opener. Uh, had a spare one of those. Actually, I was first, I was using an old one that barely held a charge, but it only has to really hold a charge for a short time. So it's hooked to the charger all the time. And then that powers this, uh, the pump. And it's turned on and off by this switch, which is controlled by this cam. And this cam has a flat spot on it. So a one quarter of the way around. So this is geared down. This was from a extruder, a plastic extruder for filament uh, for a 3D printer. And it rotates just once a minute. So I just put this switch next to this cam, and so this turns on 15 seconds every minute and runs the pump and circulates the oil. Okay, and then the filter wrench. Uh, you can buy these too, but I didn't. So I just printed one. So I'll get these loosened. So when I started draining these earlier today, I don't know how long it takes to drain an hour or so. I don't really worry about it. I just get it started and let it go. Okay, and I and here's another thing I should do. So this is my little filter that I started out with originally. Uh, it's the paper towel filter and it filters the oil. You can see the difference, this one's been filtered, and this is the cleaner oil that didn't get filtered. So this one is out of the second filter bowl, which means it's already been filtered once by the first filter, but the first filter is getting saturated. And then this one um, in with the yogurt container got filtered through this paper towel filter. So now all of this will get poured through that filter and then we'll reuse it in the pump. So and there's the paper towel filter element. And so that's got quite a bit of water in it and other particles. I'm not even going to bother to do, you know, try to salvage any of the oil out of that part. I'll just throw that part away and that, then I replace that much oil each time I clean. So, I'll just pull it out of there. Okay. And then clean any water and gooey residue out of the bottom of that. And I know for a lot of people, they don't want to have the oil filter because of all the mess with it. And yeah, that's true. Um, but I'm too cheap and, and this is not that big of a deal. If I weren't overloading the machine so much, I can do about 20 batches, sometimes a little more, before I have to even do this. So in 20 batches, typically for me, would be um, at least two months. So typically, I only average about one batch every three days. 
so it really wouldn't, it's not that big of a deal. At least not to me. Okay, so that one's nice and cleaned out. All right, and got a, a supply of paper towels to set things on. Making sure that seal stays in there. And I'll check that again before I put it back on. Oh, hey, I have one of the water block filters here. I forgot. So this is what the uh, goldenrod water block filter looks like. So it has water absorbing bits in here of some kind. And so the oil gets pulled through there and then out. Okay, and unscrew this. And this green thing is just something I 3D printed. It's actually made up of three different components. And then the black part was one of these tops of an element that I cut off and then added a screw. I probably can't see that. A screw inside there that holds it together so I can tw screw it on. Okay, so I'll finish unscrewing this other one. Yeehaw. And that one stayed on. There we go. I just take a lot of the old paper towels and put it down in there and just to clean everything out real nice. And of course it doesn't have to get oil free because I'm going to fill it back with oil. I just want it to have any water or particles out of it. And this one never, the second one never gets any particles in it because uh, the first one stops everything like that. Okay, let's see if we can get this one unscrewed. All right. Sometimes it seems hard to unscrew those, partially because they're really slippery. So this was my first one. It's a few years old. And I was using um, the water block filter on the second stage and the paper towels on the first one. But this... I recently switched to paper towel on both because it works just as well as the water block filter and costs very, very little. The next step in the filter cleaning is putting uh, the new paper towel filter onto this 3D print printed piece. So that's what we'll get done next. And I move to the next room so it's a little quieter, a little further away from the freeze dryer because it's still cooling, getting ready to start. So I want to get this filter back on so I can have it filtered as it's going. This is my filter. This used to be a roll of paper towels about that long, sliced it up into pieces with a knife. I may have video of that, I don't know. And now I just need to wrap enough of it around each of these to make a snug fit inside the barrel. And of course this is still a bit oily because there's no reason to wash it or clean it or anything. I'm just going to put it right back in. Now the one thing I do remember, try to remember to do is when I put this on, the, this plastic piece is going to come on this way and rotate this way. So I want my wraps of this to be wrapped that way also so that the end of it doesn't get unwound as I screw that on. So I put it this way. 
And so the first piece is I just pull it snug. So I'm pulling it real snug right there and going around there. The biggest problem is the fact that it's paper towels and so you got to be careful not to pull too much and pull the paper towel apart. But even if you do, it's not that big of a deal. And once you get a couple of wraps on, it goes pretty, pretty easily. But I should make a little drill attachment so then I could just uh, use a power tool to put it on there. But I just wind it on and keeping my fingers underneath to keep pressure on it so that it keeps nice snug wraps. And when it's done, the oil is going to be coming down this way through the bottom, have a space at the bottom so it can settle out any water droplets and then it'll come up through this filter and then over to the next filter and th same way through the bottom, up through it and then back to the uh, pump. So I get five of these rolls out of one roll of paper towels. And you can get uh, more than one of these from that. So you get uh, more than half a year, maybe more, uh, 10 months out of a single roll of paper towels. So for a couple of bucks and a little bit of work, uh, the oil stays clean all the time. Anyway, trying to keep it on there snug. So pretty firm. So it's more firm now than how it comes on the roll. And if I give it too much tension, it'll pop the paper towels apart. And that's not a big deal. Then you just stick it under the previous one and hold it and start rolling again. Sometimes I do that two or three times during just one filter replacement. So I want it to be a snug fit in here, but I don't want it to be so tight that I can't get it into there. Nope, still got a few more wraps. It's still loose side to side. So that's not there yet. It's pretty close though. Oops. Well, let me check it right there. See if that was enough, those extra couple of layers. Ah, that's just right. So you can see that's a snug fit. It wants to try to roll up the first couple of them. Okay. And then I put a rubber band around it. Okay, I try to make sure the rubber band's not twisted so it's nice and flat because it's got to go inside there because this is going to go up in there. There we go. Yeah. And this seems to be slightly tapered. Well, it would be for manufacturing. Um, so it's going to get more snug as it goes in. So that's like the perfect fit. Okay. So same thing with the other one. And then we'll move back over and put it on. So I just put that one underneath it, keep it snug until I go all the way past that start point again. Uh, keep it snug. Hello. But now moving back over and we'll get them in place. All right. Yeah, you can put these back in place. And they just screw on. And 
and the plastic piece is pretty slippery so I have to grab it with a uh, piece of paper towel. Okay, those are on there. And they are plastic, yeah, polycarbonate or something, but you still want to make sure you don't cross-thread them. Because then it would be ruined, I believe. First try. And you can see this tube goes way down inside. That way it delivers the oil at the bottom, so any water droplets have to go up against gravity to there, since the, wa the water droplets sink in the oil. So some of the littler ones, and that's one of the reasons I do 15 seconds on and 30 se or 45 seconds off on the timer, because then it gives 45 seconds for the little water droplets to settle out. Okay. And then I just put them on hand tight and then just a tiny touch more. And so far, it hasn't had any leaks. If it did, I would just try tightening it up just a tiny bit more. And time to refill it with oil. Make sure that these are closed. <laughs> Once that's been through the other filters, it's just beautiful again. Okay, you see it's starting to come up on that side. But now I can put the cap on and use the pump to actually pull some through, the, the, uh, the recirculating pump to pull it through. And that will speed it up. start pulling it through. Okay. Yeah, you can see it coming up on the filter material now. Okay, and there it goes. And there'll be some air bubbles once in a while still, for a little while. All right, so that's circulating right now. And nice and clear. Okay, now I can turn that off now. If I do that without trying to video it, then it takes me maybe 30 or 40 minutes. If it's 40 minutes and I do it one time every 20 batches, it's two minutes a batch. Uh, it's really not too bad. Even if it takes me an hour and I do it every 20 batches. For this series where I'm trying to really load the trays and get 10 pounds, I'm probably going to have to change this every 5 to 10 batches because uh, there's a lot of water going through there and not all of it's being caught in the chamber. So the oil is going to get saturated faster. But that's the price I pay. Okay.
If I weren't running the continuous oil filtering system, I would probably limit my batches to four, five, maybe six pounds maximum. When the oil is clean and new like this, the only way I can tell it's running besides hearing it is to touch the pump and then I can feel it. Otherwise, there's just not much to see. When the freeze drying is happening, this hose, you'll see a cloudiness coming through here and water droplets coming through here. So that would all stay in there. And so the difference from without running it, so if I don't run it for even a half an hour or hour at a time, it really gets a lot of uh, cloudiness in there. So I can understand when people say they have to change it every batch. I can't imagine running it without this. If I didn't have this, I think I would have to go with the oilless pump uh, because I don't think it would last as well. Make sure to put the plug back in. Uh, that's the fill plug that I just put on. If you don't put that on, it shoots up there oil. It's a mess. My cooling fan. Okay, everything's set. Everything's good. Turn the power back on in the pump because I turned it off when I have it uh, non-functional. It's been freezing for five and a half hours, just over five and a half hours now. It says it's 51 below. Going to get those started. That's the pasta, the garlic chicken, the bird's eye garlic chicken. And one last time, checking the... Yeah, the bubbles are still coming up the hose from the filters, so I have to watch that a little bit, make sure that uh, there's enough oil. Okay, that's done. Off and running.